time and back again. Another instalment, Drowning Love, number two. May, M-A-I. She was in Samui, Koh Samui, working for the travel board of Thailand. Now she was coming up for her 28th birthday and she was sat there the one day contemplating life. She'd had a bad relationship with that Thai guy. That had hurt her. She really wasn't interested in any relationships or love. She was focusing on life, the future. Most Thai people, they only focus on today, not tomorrow, not the future. When she was at university, they drilled it into her that whatever career she went forward in, whether she ever went in her own business, she had to plan, like a Westerner, into the future. She'd been in Samui for a while and sat there contemplating, what did she want to do? There was no challenges anymore in her job. She could move back to head office in Bangkok, maybe get a couple of promotions, work on bigger scale stuff, but she didn't fancy that. She started to think maybe she should start her own business. It's a good time in life. She's got quite a few bits of savings put together. She's been saving hard. She hasn't been spending much money. And she starts thinking about it. Where would she have a business? She knows the travel industry in Thailand, inside out. She pretty much knows it all. She's been around Thailand now for the travel board. Most places, mainly entertainment zone places where the tourists are gonna go. She could go to Chiang Mai, North Thailand, nearer her folks. There'd be potentially great business opportunities. She's thinking, I'm going to stay in the industry I know. A tour shop is the answer for tourists. Those day trips, all of that, there's money to be made with the right trips, especially bespoke trips. But she thinks she loves the sea, the beach. She loves the, the vibe. The tourists seem to flock more to the beaches than somewhere like Chiang Mai. And she's sat there looking at a map of Thailand. And she's drawn to Phuket. She's been there a couple of times. Short visits for the tourist board. She knows it, basically. There's lots of islands, there's lots of tours. There's probably lots of tour shops, like Samui. However, she thinks she's got more chance than most of those with her experience, the knowledge she's gained. And she starts thinking more and more, Phuket would be a great move. I'd have to leave my employment, have to go there, move, start searching. A couple of days she thinks about this, and more and more she thinks, this is it, it's time to do it. She contacts head office, speaks to um, someone she knows there, tells them that she's thinking of leaving now and and set her own little business up. And the person at the head office is, oh, you can't leave us, you've been so good. And made, no, I really am gonna go. And the person at head office, how about you take six months off, it's a common. Um, we'll keep you on the books, but you won't be paid, but we'll, from right now, you have six months off. And May's a bit reluctant, she said, okay, that's the easiest way to do it. And they agree, May's got a couple more days down in Samui, they'll send someone else down and she'll finish with the company. Her plan now, up home, see the folks. She finishes job, back to the parents, tells them she's packed a job in and she's going to start her own business, it's time. A little bit shocked but very supportive and they've said if you want some money we'll help you. I've got savings, I think I'm going to be alright. Roughly know what it's going to cost to do, but... And they 
whatever you've chosen, I'm going to go to Phuket. Anyway, they're happy, supportive. Day comes. She gets on a plane, Bangkok, Phuket, and in she goes. She's already gone online, found a cheap hotel, 400 baht a night for a Thai person. 600 baht if you're a foreigner. <laughs> Finds a little cheap hotel. It's not far from the all the nightlife and things in Phuket, in Patong. She lands early morning flight, taxi to the hotel, checks in, sorts everything out, pays. Now if she wants to doesn't want to rush. She's got to find a shop. She needs to have a look around. She needs to look at the competition. She needs to see what's what. So she spends a couple of days walking all around Patong. She even pops over to Karen Beach and Kata Beach, and, but Patong is the spot. She's intrigued at the nightlife. She's not fussed with it. She knows about it, but she's never done the famous Bangla Road at night. So she ventures out in the evening, early, thinking it's gonna be lively, about six o'clock, and she walks into the top of Bangla Road and walks down. It's just starting to, people going to work and things, but she's got the vibe straight away. She can see what it is and it's not her cup of tea. She doesn't like all that side of Thailand at all. There's shops all the way along Bangla Road as well as bars and go-go's etc and food and alleyways with more but she thinks that's not the clientele she wants doesn't want drunk foreigners walking into her little shop if she's on one of those alleys or on that road she doesn't want that customer she wants the more mature customer the wedding couples she wants the Japanese the Chinese visitors she decides pretty much straight away that Bangla Road end of Phuket, Patong, is not for her. She's going to want to be the other end or further back by the shopping areas. So, she finishes off Bangla Road at the beach end. Thinks, nah, definitely not. And she walks along the beach. Three quarters of the way along. Sorry, 30% of the way along. Before the middle shopping bit she sees a tour shop she has to be nosy she goes in all the usual posters all the usual trips and day trips the girl comes over and asks her if there's anything to help her with she says no I'm just having a look but it's all the normal nothing no, no bespoke trips nothing she's this is good they've just got all the basics and she comes out walks further along She's looking at the shops, they're all quite big, but they're between the beach, opposite the beach, there's the road. It's a one-way system in Patong. So you have the, the beach, the road coming up one way along, <clears throat> and then all the shops the other side. Here, any of these shops are gonna cost an absolute fortune to open. So there's no way she can get one of those, not for the first shop anyway. She carries on walking further along lots of guys on the other side of the road with boards up selling fish and trip fish and chips <laughs> fishing trips and jet ski hire and motorcycle hire and she's clocking it as all as she's walking along anyway she gets right to the end there's a chemist on the left quite a big chemist a uh, little side street after the chemist the road goes around the corner again it's one way coming down and the other side of the corner is a hotel resort with bushes around it. As she turns a the corner, there's a beer bar right in front of her. So next to the road, pavement, beer bar, open sort of bar. In fact, there's a couple more behind it going up the road along the pavement. She notices just in behind the beer bars, there's a little alleyway there. It's about six foot wide. So you can see some shops down the left. Um, and at the end's a public lavatory well guarded by what I would call a grumpy old Thai lady but only if you're a foreigner um, the first shop on the left is in this alleyway it's empty then there's a salon 
there's a tailor's and there's another little shop at the end uh, makeup a bit like a salon but just for makeup and nails and things and then there's this lavatory and three bars on the right with bar stools all the way around these sort of oblong shaped bars they're separate bars but this bar here is dolphin bar the one on the front corner anyway little empty shop so she just looks in the window and it's horrible it's dark and there's all sorts it was a tattoo shop all sorts of weird pictures and paintings on the ceiling and the walls but it's only it's about eight foot across two and a half meters across the front all glass front window with a door eight foot across it goes back she can see about 10 12 foot back a bit of an alcove in the back can't quite see the lights are off but it's perked her interest anyway she thinks need lavatory she walks down the alleyway past the salon and the tailors she doesn't get accosted by the Indian guy at the tailors because she's a lady he's selling main men's suits mainly yes to the little lady the old lady sat outside the lavatory who's lovely to her being Thai of course grumpy old cow uses the lavatory then as she come out she mentions the lady this shop, there's no sign on the shop saying for rent or anything. And this lady says to her, um, go into the salon. She thinks the lady's in there. So she walks up, the bar's on the left, as I say, the bar stalls. There's, there's a few tourists in there. And she goes up a few meters into the salon. And there's one um, lady boy having haircuts and the works by a girl uh, sat in the chair facing the mirror there's two chairs in there two mirrors but over in the back corner there's this old Thai lady a bit of gold on her dressed in a like silk dark red two-piece suit and the girl playing with the lady boy says can I help you and she said I'm inquiring about that shop the little old lady in the corner her eyes went bing as if she just won the lottery immediately jumped to her feet as if she was a 21 year old come across said that's, that's one of my shops um, would you like to have a look at it and surprised that this by this maze yeah uh, let's have a look at it by all means and the little old lady grabs May's hand and trot out of the door a couple of meters up to the empty shop and then the old lady goes in her handbag and she's scratching around pulls out some keys and fiddles around with the keys eventually gets the key for the door opens the door pushes the door open and it stays open and then she trots off to the back and switches on come the lights but there's a red light a purple light they're all dark bulbs and things you still can't see much but she beckons may in there's no furniture it's been emptied the carpet is horrible and it is just a room that's 12 foot down to the back and about eight foot across. A little, out, little sort of cut out alcove at the back with a, a sink, a little bit of a worktop, what looks like marks from where a microwave was sat. Um, and a really, really small toilet in the, there's a little doorway there. No door, just to obviously add some blinds or something down with a little toilet. European but only the one thing and the lady uh, May starts thinking well, this could possibly work I could get a couple of desks in here it's next 30 meters from the beach from the water there's tourists at the bars outside this has got to be you know she's thinking maybe this is about 7,000 baht a month rent for such a little shop and she says to the lady, how much is this shop? How much do you want for it? Um, why is it empty? And the lady replies, tattoo artist just ran away a couple of weeks before and didn't pay his rent, just disappeared. And the lady said to her, uh, I want 20,000 baht a month for the shop. May nearly fell off her feet. 
twenty thousand. She's like, you know, which couldn't be rude, but it's sort of what? Yeah. And this lady, twenty thousand baht a month. <clears throat> and May's, uh, is that price negotiable? She says, do you need accommodation? May's like, whoa, you have accommodation? There's nothing above the shop. It's only one floor, and there's a roof all the way along, and the bars just single floor. And the ladies, yeah, 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 come on, come on. Pushes May out the door, turns around, locks the door, lights her off, locks the door, grabs her hand again, and just walks back towards, just five metres towards the beach, round in front of the chemist, and there's another road there. Turns into this road, walking away from the beach, and there's shops all the way up the, uh, this, maybe 50 metres, 100 metres of shops. She only goes up about 30 metres, in between two shops, there's a doorway and she up a couple of concrete steps off the road so pulling May along right up pushes this door open it's not locked and inside some stairs going up concrete steps quite narrow up onto a walkway with a metal banister there looking over the top of the shops the, the tattoo shop and the salon and the bars and then over there you can see this complex the resort for the hotel and this little walkway along with this, you know, metal balustrade. And the other lady turns to the left, goes along a couple of doors, keys again, rattling around the door, opens this door, flicks the switch straight inside, lights come on, pulls May inside. And in there is a nice, maybe 30, 35 metre, square metre. Um, there's a, as you're walking on the right, there's a door, there's a shower, toilet, sink, mirrors. Nice little ensuite. The main room, there's a single bed there, not double, single. Um, a couple of seats, a coffee table, a window, but there's no balcony or anything, just a window overlooking the street, the side street, and a television stand there. A fan up in the corner, two corners, and then a vertical stand on the floor. And she says to, to May, what do you think? What do you think? Maze, this is lovely, really nice, and it's very close to the shop. How much is this? Now, Phuket, it's expensive. Wherever you are, it's expensive. She wants 10,000 baht a month for this room. Now, that's not too bad, considering you're so close to the beach. And Maze, oh, well, that's a bit more. You can get rooms in Phuket similar you know, maybe a mile back and down towards the town for about six thousand, six and a half thousand. And the woman says, How long you want room and shop? Deal, we can do a deal. She's speaking to each other in Thai, so it's me interpreting. We can do a deal, what would you like? You know, how long do you want? And May said, Well, what would you do for six months? You want twenty thousand for that, ten for this? It's a lot of money, 30,000 baht. The woman says, well, one year, one year. If you have one year, shop and the room together, she'll do 20,000 baht for the pair. I mean, that's a huge drop. Now May's interested. I mean, okay, if the shop, that's 15 for the shop, five for the room. We'll continue this one. The next one. Where's Joe? He should be back by now. <laughs>